Hello, I'm Melissa Conley Tyler, the National Director of the Australian Institute of International Affairs. I'm here today with Professor Kath Galber from the University of Queensland, who's head of the organising committee for the IPSA World Congress, an event that has brought more than 2,000 uh, domestic and international politics experts from around the world to Brisbane. Clearly, it's been a huge event. Yes, so, it has. <laughs> we're at an interesting time in international affairs at the moment, and I'm interested in the themes that the conference has taken up and how they uh, how they link with what's happening in international affairs. Well, the official theme for the conference is borders and margins, mm -hmm. and we wanted to make it quite clear that we weren't just talking about geographical boundaries. There's obviously a big issue internationally at the moment to do with migration and people movement, mm -hmm. asylum seekers, people smuggling, um, pe mm. atrocities and so on that are going on that are contributing to internally displaced people. But we didn't want to restrict the conference mm -hmm. theme to that and so the elaboration of the conference theme in the program also talks about liminal boundaries and, uh, and non-geographical or non-physical boundaries mm -hmm. in terms of identity and conceptions of democracy. So mm -hmm. what are the limits of democracy in the contemporary age? Uh, how do we understand uh, when a country is moving more or is becoming more or less democratic mm -hmm. or electoral integrity, for example, is one of the big themes at the conference. So we really wanted, and identity, uh, not just the usual kind of categories of minorities, mm. LGBTQ rights, gender is a big theme, um, race, racialism mm. and so on. So we wanted to really think of boundary borders and margins in multiple dimensions, talk about how those things are constructed to include and exclude. Mm. Uh, and we thought that that provided a very good mm. basis for a huge variety. Mm. We've also had Four keynotes. Uh, one of the keynote, the first keynote at the conference mm. was by uh, Professor Lisa Hill from Adelaide mm. and Anthony Green, the well known ABC election analyst, talking about the ways in which preferential voting and compulsory voting in Australia have really actually been a bit of a model globally mm. for innovations in how to make democracy work. Not Absolutely. that we do it right all the time, yeah, and Anthony Green brought a, a prop along which was one of those huge ballot papers and said, don't do it this way. Yeah. Um, and then we've the other plenaries, one is on populism, mm -hmm. one is on one yesterday was on uh, human rights, the state of human rights globally, mm -hmm. and then the final plenary on the last day will be Cynthia Enloe, mm -hmm. who's whose topic is something like patriarchy is, big, patriarchy is bigger than Trump. So you know, it's People a, are looking forward to that very yes, much. They are. Yes, they yeah. are. So, I mean, there's obviously a lot of researchers from all around the world who are presenting here. What, what are some of your favourites of the, of the research being presented? Well, one of the, in fact, in my view, the biggest yeah. asset to IPSA yeah. as an organisation is that the World Congress is genuinely international mm. and not dominated by the Anglo countries. Mm. So I've had the great pleasure of meeting colleagues from Africa, Peru, Japan, Argentina, um, Russia, East, all countries in Eastern Europe as well. We have the usual United Kingdom, Europe, United States mm -hmm. people, but it's been a real mix and I love that. I also love the fact that the Congress is officially bilingual, so mm -hmm. there's a francophone stream mm -hmm. of uh, colleagues giving papers in French. So just in terms of the diversity, that's one of the mm -hmm. great strengths of IPSA. Mm -hmm. I've had the pleasure of hearing about, I just went, for example, to the a plenary organised by AJ Brown from mm -hmm. the Australian Political Science Association he's the outgoing president mm. and his presidential plenary was on corruption mm. and we had a colleague there from Poland mm. who dealt explicitly with the question of whether Poland is becoming autocratic or authoritarian. Mm. There's a, some people are suggesting perhaps it's sliding back into authoritarianism. Mm. He, he took a very clearly argued view that no it wasn't. Uh, and then we had Paul Haywood who gave a more conceptual paper on how most people think of integrity as being the lack of corruption. Mm. And he said, let's think about integrity not just as the lack of corruption, non-corruption, mm. but in positive terms, what, what are the positive things mm. people need to do to show integrity? And AJ Brown gave a paper mm. about the uh, Australian system of governance mm. and whether it, we would benefit from having stronger institutional protections or mechanisms to enhance integrity. Mm. We tend to rely on the really traditional separation mm -hmm. of powers in the constitution, the executive, mm. the legislature, the judiciary, mm. maybe it's time to think about a fourth branch. So his paper was provocatively titled, Interesting. should the there be a fourth branch? branch. Yes. Yeah. yeah, well that, that leads on to my last question, which are, what are some of the things you saw from this that you think Australian scholars could be working on more? You know, are there gaps in, in the areas that Australian scholars are looking at and places that we should be doing more work? 
There are always gaps. Yep. Uh, one of the things that has really struck me in global political science in the last few years is the rapid expansion of focus on the online environment. Mm. And I'm also interested in that, but everybody who works in it comes at it from their different angles. So while mm. you might have a paper on the internet and then you get a room full of people because mm -hmm. the paper's on the internet or Google mm -hmm. or Facebook or the use of GIFs or the, you know Twitter or whatever, and so all these people turn up. But then it turns it turns out we're all investigating this same phenomenon from very different mm. angles. So you'll have an international relations scholar mm. approaching. Uh, so Constance Duncan does work mm. on Donald Trump's Twitter feed, mm. but she does it from That's an a big IR. Subject. Yes, it is. She does that from an IR perspective, yep. and then someone else will. I went to a paper yesterday on the use of visual images in protest. Mm. And she was looking at that from the perspective of deliberative democracy. Mm. So do the, does the enhanced use of visuals or the capacity to use visuals in the digital age, which mm. is obvious, everyone can take a photo and mm. put it on Twitter these days, how does that change how we deliberate? Mm. Which I think is a fascinating question. That was Carolyn Hendricks's paper yesterday. Mm. And those kinds of things. Then we've got other people looking at political participation, Ariadne Vroman and Annika Gallia, on what does it mean for political participation when the forms of participation go online? Mm. And so they're not the traditional things we think about, like joining a political party or going on a march, mm. but it's just a different type of political participation. Mm. So I think those kinds of looking at the same problems but from different angles um, very is, is yeah, it's very useful, very interesting. And one of the great things about a conference of this mm. size is the opportunity to talk to all of those people who are looking at the same problem but from different perspectives. Mm. And I keep having conversations with people saying, we should talk more. <laughs> Which is exactly what you want from a conference of yes, this sort. Right. So look, thank you very much, Professor Gelfro. I think you've given us a great uh, taster of, of just what a smorgasbord this conference has been. Um, we'll be having some more interviews uh, with participants at the IPSA World Congress here in Brisbane on AAA Vision. Thank you for watching.